top-down strategy ensuring that religious people will fall in line with an emerging global framework. Ah, the one world religion? I got a feeling that's what they're talking about. A type of world theology, world theology, along with an international system of socialism. Oh good, that's what Obama's ushering us into. The socialistic, communistic, fascistic type of thing. Well, hey, that's where we're moving. And it's going to work particularly well in the Christian community. Isn't that kind of funny? They singled out the Christian community. The history of the G8 World Religious Summit goes back to 2005. That year, Jim Wallace of Sojourners, a left-wing Christian advocacy group, teamed up with the Archbishop of Canterbury to raise the voices of the faith leaders of the world in unity in unity, for a call for justice. In 2005 event was a small ecumenical affair made up of representatives from Catholic groups, the National Association of Evangelicals, World Vision, the Salvation Army, the Mennonite Central Committee, and the World Evangelical Alliance and other church bodies. I guarantee you they're all 501c3 corporations up there in America. These leaders released an Action on Poverty document calling for governments to alleviate poverty and for faith communities to generate the necessary moral will. The text itself was very short and ambiguous with an underlying socialist slant. The next year, the G8 Religious Summit took place in Moscow and a host of other religion, religious leaders attended. Leaders from Muslim, Jewish, Buddhist, Hindu, Shinto, along with Christians, pseudo-Christians, they should say, hashed out another declaration, this time calling for a more systematic partnership of religious leaders with, guess who? The United Nations. How do they just, it's like every article, they keep popping up more and more and more. Well, you know, it should be of no surprise, actually. So they want a more systemic partnership with these reprobate apostate religions and religious leaders and the United Nations. We want to all have this one world religion. In 2007 at Cologne, the emphasis was on the UN Millennium Development Goals, whatever that is, and the support for a worldwide climate change protection agreement. What they're trying to do is get on this common ground. Hey, we can all agree on climate change, right? We can all agree on peace and prosperity. Let's not look at what divides us. Let's look at what unites us. That's what they say. Okay, so then it goes on to say, in 2008-2009, the religious leaders met in Japan and Italy. Now, I got a, a little link here to my teaching I did on witchcraft and the emerging one world, new world order religion. Because witchcraft is going to be the coming essence of the one world religious system. Okay, and again, all these religions while they will probably all still retain some semblance of what they were once, there's going to be a global ecumenical push for the uniting of all these religions. And, and this is going to come most aggressively under the Antichrist and the False Prophet. Through lying signs and wonders and miracles, he's going to convince everybody this is the way to go. You know, I am the awaited Messiah, I am the fifth Buddha, I am, you know, Krishna, I am the Messiah, I am the Christ, I am Imam Mahdi to the, to the Muslims. And, you know, so that's what they're going to be doing at this point. And, and again, this is just all building to that. Everything's falling into place. Just as we've predicted for the years that we've been doing these studies, it's all starting to come into place uh, in actually a more aggressive way than I've ever seen it. Going further, it says, Japan's declaration calls, the, when they met in Japan, called for the religions to unite in a commitment to peace. It also recognized that religious communities are the largest social networks which reach into the furthest corners of, furthest corners of the earth. See, the Antichrist knows that he cannot implement his agenda unless his deception is particularly of a religious slant. He can't unite us through politics or through a one-world monetary system or a one-world economic system. There's way, way, way too much that would still divide us from a religious standpoint. But if he can get everybody on the same level playing field with a one-world religion, everything else will fall into line. If he can get Muslims and Jews agreeing, which he'll, he'll find a way to do that when he confirms that covenant for seven years, and all the rest of the world, through lying signs, wonders, and miracles... That's when it's really going to happen. 
for the one world system of Antichrist and the false prophet. And remember, God's permitting this to happen. It's not like God's up there fretting and saying, oh, I can't believe this is all happening. He predicted in his word it's going to happen. So it shouldn't surprise us and it shouldn't get us down. It's just confirmation that the Bible is the word of God and it is truth. So let's go further here. Um, Hence the Japan Summit shared demanded a system of shared security based on interdependence and the establishment of a, quote, earth fund dedicated to environmental protection and a binding global climate treaty. What what are these religions meeting about that for? Well, it's common ground, evidently. Another document was released in Japan recognizing that Dharmic, pantheistic, and and ancestor traditions of Eastern societies remain a practical tool in defense of the environment. And religious diversity was expounded as part of a divine cosmic order. Therefore, we seek to be to be considered equal partners. See, this is why the Christians will have to go. The true born again Bible believing Christians, because they'll never give they'll never give into this. It will never happen. If you're a true born again Bible believing Christian, you're not going to give into this. You're not going to say, "Oh yeah, you know what? Yeah, all religions are equal, and I'm so self deluded. I got I'm I'm going to believe. How can you believe that and believe?" The Bible. It, it, it can't happen. You have to, you got to choose the route that you're going to go. But that's what they're desperately, desperately trying to seek. They want all religions to be on equal footing, especially Christianity. Because that's the only true, true, true threat from a. Now I understand there's good angels, there's Jesus Christ, there's God the Father, okay, but from a. His, we're ambassadors of Christ on earth. We're, we're created in God's image as born-again Bible-believing Christians. And we're here to wage war in that particular war. And if he can get all of the Christians, well, he's not going to get them all, but as many Christians as possible to see, that's just that many less people that will actually be in that war. He wants as few people in that war as possible. Satan. So he's trying to deceive the maximum number of people so that there's as few people as possible in the war. But that doesn't really matter to God. You know, I mean, look at um, Gideon. And, you know, he didn't, he didn't, he just wanted the people that were hardcore. You know, he, it only takes, but see, you know what's cool about that? You think about it, God gets more glory in that scenario. The fewer the people that are that are actually fighting the battle, the more glory God gets because it's more obvious that God had to do it, which is kind of cool. You know, but we obviously we want people to get their eyes open and we want them to be saved and we don't want just like this tiny, but the Bible, you know, traditionally in the Bible, there's usually a remnant and God always preserves a remnant. And and I'm not saying that there's not going to be martyrs. Obviously, the Bible predicts that and these types of things. But the Bible says they overcame him, meaning the Antichrist, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they love their lives not under the death. So that's how we overcome them. Let's go further. Um, Finally, in Rome, when they met in Rome, faith leaders focused on the worsening global economy and broadly called for a new financial pact without really explaining what it would entail. To be fair to the Rome event, the entire summit was overshadowed by the almost simultaneous release of Pope Benedict's encyclical Charity and Truth, which shook the international community in its brazen call for a world political authority with teeth. Quote with teeth. I didn't even know about that. But evidently the Pope um, wanted this world political authority with teeth. Uh, What all this represents from the first event in 2005 until Winnipeg is the international move within pseudo-Christendom to politically unite with other faiths in one community. The motivator? Social justice. World peace. Care for the earth and alleviating poverty. And who doesn't want peace and healthy environment and the poor raised above their poverty level? See, they're, they're just trying to... Not, this is exactly what Rick Warren's doing with his initiatives. All sounds real good on the outside when until the time when you realize who you're in league with. The Bible says to be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You know, for what communion hath Christ with Belial, which means the devil. So we don't want to do that. Okay, so now, when I was reading this, the Holy Spirit convicted me of what Maitreya said. 
So I went and I checked his newest newsletter, just hot off the presses, okay? And I just got the first thing that he wrote about this last month. And just compare this, what I'm going to read you, to what we just